thank you, Alexis and Jennifer. Uh, first, I should say that uh, Caller Early College has got a lot of recognition already, and I'm going to add my vote to that too. Their staff is sitting right here at one of the front tables. And uh, in February, I had an opportunity to attend a seminar there with the uh, Early College High School staff, or some of the staff, from uh, UNC Charlotte's Early College High School. And y'all did a great job with that seminar. I learned so much in those two days. So again, thank you for all the hard work you do. <clears throat> I am here uh, representing or, or trying to fill in, let's say, for Johan Enslin, who's our director of uh, EPIC at UNC Charlotte at the William State Lee College of Engineering. And uh, Johan really wanted to be here today uh, he sends his regrets, uh, but he had a good excuse, and I'm going to tell you about it. He, uh, Johan, uh, becomes a U.S. citizen today, right about now. He passed all of his requirements, uh, took, you know, answered all the questions, or at least enough of them correctly, to get his paperwork in order. And they called him last week and said, "Report to, I guess, a courthouse today at 12:30." And you will be sworn in as a U.S. citizen. So uh, next time you see him, you'll have to uh, quiz him on what he learned and see if he's really, if he cheated or if he is really retaining the information that he was supposed to. Uh, so, you know, for example, just ask him, you know, what, what year was the Constitution signed? And uh, it's 1787, by the way. You know, I didn't know that myself. I had to look that up. And I hope we don't have any history teachers in here that are going to contradict me on that. But I think that's, I think that's true. But um, it, is, it is great to be here representing UNC Charlotte uh, and the uh, College of Engineering at UNC Charlotte and the Early College High School at UNC Charlotte, which is not yet open yet. We have our staff, uh, three tables in front of me. I know a lot of you have met them here today. Uh, I'll show you a picture of what our uh, beautiful new school looks like. Uh, and it, it's right, it's, they, but they parked it behind the parking deck. I don't know if there's anything uh, relevant about that or not, but it's going to be a great program. Uh, there's something else that I, I realize I'm working against today. Uh, you know, uh, the U.S., of course, is playing Germany right now in World Cup, and I'm, I'm very impressed that so many of you decided to come here instead of uh, huddling out in the bar or in this hotel or somewhere else to watch that game, which is probably what I would be doing if I were you. But uh, if, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're monitoring the score, if you're monitoring the game, uh, please let me know if you get any updates, if anybody scores or anything. While I'm, while I'm presenting, I'll stop and we'll take the appropriate action. <laughs> so we also, uh, well, before I get into that, let me, let me stop and just thank all the teachers in here. And I know almost everybody in here is either currently a teacher or you have been a teacher at some point in your life. And you probably hear this all the time, but it, it, it needs to be said that you never know what kind of difference you can make in somebody's life. Uh, I think back, <laughs> and this was a long time ago when I was in Murphy Elementary School in Greensboro. And my second grade teacher was uh, Mrs. Waddell. My fourth grade teacher was Mrs. House. My fifth grade teacher was Mrs. Powell. These were my three favorite teachers all the way through school. Now, I can't tell you anybody that taught me in high school. I don't remember their name. I can remember very few professors' names in college. But those three teachers in, in Murphy Elementary School in Greensboro uh, had a huge impact on me that I really didn't even understand or appreciate until much later. Uh, they, they made me learn multiplication tables, and they, they got me comfortable with doing mental math so that I didn't feel like I had to write down everything. Of course, calculators were uh, many years away during this period, so uh, everything was done on paper, with pencil and paper. And they, gave me, they got me comfortable with math and science, and that eventually led to a, a career in engineering. Uh, I retired from Arriva. Uh, last year, last December, uh, as a mechanical systems engineer and uh, worked for 35 years in the power industry and power generation, and before that, uh, four or five years in, uh, in beverage and food uh, packaging and processing. So, of course, uh, I didn't know how I was going to use those great math skills when I was in 
second, fourth, and fifth grades and beyond, but they came in handy. And I think often about how fortunate I was to have great teachers like you in this room to uh, maybe not turn me into a great mathematician, but at least get me comfortable enough with math so that I felt like I had the skills to pursue a degree in engineering, which was a struggle, honestly, for me, because I had been out of high school for seven years when I went back and made the decision to pursue an engineering degree at UNC Charlotte. So thank you for all the work you do encouraging your average students like me. We, uh, we also were fortunate this week to host a group of uh, a field trip, I guess, from this group. I think we had 22 of you uh, Monday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Epic. Uh, and I saw a few of you when I came in this morning. Uh, we, had, uh, we had a pretty packed four hours. Michelle Howard was there and gave us an update on the uh, early college high school we have. We did a tour of uh, Epic, or at least two of our labs. We, uh, we had an overview from Dr. Enslin on what Epic's mission is and what we try to do in our building and in our program. Uh, we had an interesting panel discussion that Dr. Howard participated in. And then we talked about Switch Energy, which I hope a lot of you have heard about the Switch Energy Project. Uh, I'm going to mention it again before I sit down, but uh, promise me that if you haven't heard about Switch Energy, that you'll go visit that website uh, sometime before fall semester so you can start handling these complex energy questions that all of us, frankly, have to deal with. Just a couple of slides that we took. And my apologies, if, if your picture appears on one of these slides and you did not give us permission to take a picture of you, and I know a few people didn't answer the question, do you have permission, uh, or do we have permission? And if, we, if you didn't want your picture taken, uh, and we did anyway, uh, I promise you I will not post these on the internet or anything like that, so don't worry. But our first stop on the lab tour uh, was our, high, our uh, Smart Grid Lab, uh, which is heavily sponsored by Duke Energy. Uh, Smart Grid is a very hot topic nowadays uh, in uh, computing and uh, security, grid security, uh, grid reliability. We're very fortunate to have that lab in Epic. Uh, also, we took our group to our high bay lab, which is a structures laboratory for concrete, steel, and other materials. Uh, we, it's well equipped. It's, it's not, uh, it doesn't look like a laboratory. It looks more like a big factory. We have two 30-ton cranes. We have uh, capability to load up an object with uh, up to three, uh, three 400,000 pounds per square inch. So we can do some pretty amazing and honestly some pretty dangerous experiments in there. Uh, so we have a lot of supervision in there, and it's actually handled more like a factory floor than a typical laboratory. And uh, here's another slide uh, taken in that, in that, in the control room actually for the smart grid lab. I mean the uh, high bay lab. Uh, Dr. Park is in there explaining uh, how we monitor and measure the tests that we conduct. We do uh, sponsored research, uh, we do graduate level research, we do undergraduate level research, and we even do some senior design project work in that lab. And we're very excited about expanding the capability and hope all of you if, you, if you haven't been there yet, I hope all of you will contact me or contact the college and arrange to bring your class there. Now, let's talk about EPIC's mission for just a minute. Uh, there's really three, three pieces to that mission, education, uh, research and development, and economic development. And I know you don't really want to hear that much about research today or economic development. Let's, let's talk about education for just a minute, because that's really why we're here this week. We have uh, a growing and strong undergraduate program as part of EPIC. EPIC, of course, stands for the Energy Production and Infrastructure Center. So in, within that building and within that program, we focus on those classes and that research that supports the energy industry, which is such a large part of this area's economy. We have two, over 250 companies with 27,000 employees in the Charlotte area uh, make their living in the energy business one way or the other. So that was really the driving force behind EPIC becoming what it is today. <clears throat> so we have undergraduate programs to teach courses specifically for those skills. We have undergraduate research opportunities. 
We have uh, many senior design projects now. Uh, the slide says 32 is really more like 45 or 50 now that are focused on energy related ideas. We also have a strong graduate level program for energy scholars. Uh, for those engineers, uh, mechanical, civil, electrical, or systems, they can also become uh, uh, energy, uh, have an energy focus which shows up on their transcript. Uh, and uh, those, from, by doing that, they'll have certain courses that they're required to take, and then they have to pick their electives from a list of energy focused courses as well. When they graduate with that energy concentration, <clears throat> employers like Duke Energy, Siemens, CB&I find that concentration very uh, interesting and very marketable. These graduates uh, command really good starting salaries, uh, usually can find a job right in the Charlotte area, uh, and many of our students, in fact, come to Charlotte, UNC Charlotte, wanting to live and settle down and raise a family in Charlotte. So this is a good career choice for students thinking about engineering but not really sure what branch of engineering they want to get into. But let's talk about K through 12, because that's, that's even focusing down even closer to what we're about here this week. Uh, we realize in EPIC that K through 12 education uh, needs to be a priority for, for us, just like our undergraduate and graduate programs. Um, we, we, it is selfish, really. I mean, not that we're just good guys, but it's selfish of us because we know we need to have motivated, trained, and excited graduating seniors coming from high school who are already familiar with the energy industry and come with a good background in math and science, and they're ready to take on the challenges of an engineering degree with an energy focus. Like I said, we can promise that they'll get a good education and they'll get a good job, but we really need to embrace and, and uh, collaborate with K through 12 school systems and teachers to do what we can to encourage students to not only prepare themselves for an engineering career, but also to be aware of all these complex questions that we're facing now in energy. And that's really what EPIC is all about. I mentioned our early college high school. We have one under construction now. In fact, construction is, is nearing completion. And uh, I think uh, Will Leach, our principal, is probably resting easier at night because he can drive by there now and see what looks like a real school. And it looks like we're actually going to complete that building before 1st of August when our teachers and students show up. And then the third component I wanted to mention about K-12 through education as it relates to EPIC is that we think that part of our mission is to provide resources that help K through 12 teachers and, and K through 12 systems uh, teach engineering, encourage engineering, uh, familiarize your students with energy and why it's such a big deal in North Carolina and really why it's such a big deal everywhere. So while we may not have been all that interested in that mission before, we, are, we now realize this is huge for us in order for us to be successful, you have to be very successful as well. And I mentioned the Switch Energy Project. Uh, we are not, you know, we have no commercial interest in Switch Energy Project. I should say that right up front. We receive no dollars, no, uh, nothing at all from Switch Energy to advertise this good work that Dr. Scott Tinker has done. We just recognize it as a very useful set of tools that really apply, I think, to all grade levels, K all the way through 12 and beyond. Uh, he has a great 90-minute uh, documentary film that gives a, an overview of energy in general. Uh, he also has many uh, three-minute lab videos available from his website, which I have here. And if you can't read that website address, which I know I can't standing right here, so uh, just, just type in Switch Energy Project on the address line when you Google uh, you know, next time you're on the Google website, checking out all the cool World Cup uh, doodles that they put on there. And they have some great ones, by the way. And in fact, you can even go to a Google archive and look at previous doodles. And, and the one they had, uh, just getting off the study, the one they had the day before yesterday was great. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, go back and look at it. 
Now, I mentioned early college high school. There's, uh, there's what it looked like uh, Monday. Now, yesterday, I think it was, or maybe Tuesday, they delivered brick. So they, they are going to brick up the, uh, the exterior so that it matches the standard UNCC red brick. And I'm not sure that's really a brick color that's in the catalog somewhere. But if you drive through the UNC Charlotte campus, you will see that almost every building is a red brick building. And uh, I don't know if Michelle would agree, but I think we can, we can uh, thank uh, Dr. Woodard, uh, previous chancellor, for the red brick selection, which I, I don't have any problem with, but some people consider our campus to be monotonous, but I, I kind of like it. Um, like I said, it'll be grades 9 through 13. You probably already heard this uh, sometime this week. A five-year comprehensive high school that focuses not only on STEM, but focuses on energy. And our graduates, after five years, will not only have a high school diploma, but they can earn 40 to 50 college credit hours uh, of rigorous college courses. I'm not talking about... Uh, Anything particularly easy, I know uh, calculus one in the first, first two courses in uh, differential and integral calculus are part of that curriculum. Uh, the first chemistry, engineering chemistry, uh, physics. And we're, we're talking about courses here that typically weed out college students, much less high school students. So this is a serious program. We're going to expect a lot out of our students. And we're confident they will deliver. Well, and I think Dr. Howard would agree we have the staff uh, and faculty in place to deliver on this great challenge. Now, uh, when, when I was uh, given the task of filling in for uh, Dr. Insulin today, one of, the, one of the talking points that I was given was uh, workforce predictions. And um, we, uh, as part of E4 Carolinas, which is an energy industry uh, advocacy group, in and around uh, North and South Carolina. Uh, the, a study was commissioned to predict uh, workforce challenges for the energy industry in particular. And they surveyed over 100 companies in that industry. And uh, there was, they were asked several questions about workforce. One of them was, uh, do you, are you able to uh, fill all of your technical jobs? You know, what percentage of you are having trouble filling all your current open positions in engineering and IT? 34% of the response was that, no, we cannot fill all those open job requisitions. 34% of our jobs go unfilled or we have to go elsewhere to find the skills needed to fill those jobs. So that uh, that's consistent with everything that I hear, honestly, that even in a time of fairly high unemployment, uh, many of our industry partners around Charlotte, including Siemens and others, uh, struggle to find the workforce uh, they need to fill engineering slots, advanced manufacturing slots on the uh, factory floor, IT positions. So we think we're on the right track. We think we, we do need to reinforce STEM education. We need to reinforce engineering education. We need to recognize how important these skills are to the rebuilding of our economy. The second point I wanted to make about workforce prediction, and it's, this is not part of the survey that was completed, is that a disproportionate amount, a disproportionate amount of these jobs are held by white males. 10% or so of our workforce, and in fact 10% of our engineering student population uh, is made up of females and minorities. We just cannot afford to continue uh, that trend of not capitalizing on the talents of the workforce other than white males. We just can't, we can't make this work for our country. We have to work uh, together to find strategies that attract females and minorities to STEM fields, to engineering in particular. Uh, I don't know what the, what the answer is. I don't know what the secret solution is. But somehow we have to repackage STEM careers and engineering in particular in a way that appeal to females and other underrepresented groups. In other words, we need more women and more minorities in STEM. And I, I don't know any other way to say it, just flat out blunt, 
We have to have more women and minorities in STEM. We have to find some ways to encourage that, make it attractive, show that it's a great way to land a good job, and give them the encouragement and the confidence to know that they can succeed in those fields. And with that, I want to thank you, and, th and thanks for inviting me. Uh, I didn't hear any scores come up on these games, so I'm assuming it's still scoreless. Uh, but uh, thank you for your time, and I enjoyed being here.